Hey, yo, listen to another show on the Four Odd Radio Network. For more shows, you can go and check out FourOddRadio.com. How they say? Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this 4-Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Welcome into an episode of Appropriately Inappropriate. Thank you for coming in. If this is your first time, uh, it's a comedy podcast where we talk about random things and we have one of our comedy friends come in uh, as a guest. And we talk to them about comedy and then just random stuff. And we have a lot of fun with it. So thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy it. And we hope you come back and listen. For all of those who are coming back to listen, hey, thanks for coming back. Nice to hear you. Oh. <laughs> you can't hear them. Hey, I'm so stoked this is interactive. <laughs> this is actually a dancing yeah. podcast. Go ahead and call in if your personal friend didn't happen to have my phone number. I thought it would be better than saying nice to see you. We can, we've never seen them. That's true. I thought it was But nice. you're right. We've never heard nice. them either. I, yeah, nice to I, read I just, your comments. I hey. would say thanks for supporting. All right. Okay. So, anyways, Josh Bingenheimer's our guest. <laughs> He's probably better at the intros than I am. Uh, really funny comedian. Really great guy. Runs an incredible room that we do every Thursday. We'll talk about that. Uh, but get this intro out of the way. You can follow me, Kevin Elliott, on Twitter at Kevin underscore Elliott. Uh, find me on Facebook, Kevin Elliott. And it's just one T at the end, no two T's. A lot of Elliot's are spelled with two T's. Oh, I thought you were... Okay. Well, either way. Um, let's see. Sunday. This comes out Sunday. We're recording before that. But I am in Los Angeles for the week. Let's see. Sunday night at the Comedy Store. Monday night at the Comedy Store. Tuesday night at the Comedy Store. And Wednesday night, I don't remember where I'm at that night. So, just follow me on Twitter and I'll post it. Whatever. Okay. So the comedy store is going out of business, huh? Yep, yeah. Soon. They're starting to hire Soon. some D level. Uh... <laughs> You're D level? Uh, yeah, I finally made it up to nice. D level. Very good. I'm not even a level. Before that, he was sucking toes, but now he's I, I just, sucking I just hang with him. That's pretty good. I'm like Kevin's only entourage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, shit, uh, Nerd Melt is Tuesday also before, so I think that's like at six. Okay. And then, uh, ah, whatever. But uh, I'll be out there with Rob Maybe, Mike Dapper, and Justin Teachin. They're coming with me, so we're going to have a lot of fun. And we'll tell all those stories when we get back for next week. Nancy. Yes, Kevin. Are you guys all driving together? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. Is it? No. <laughs> Are you driving? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good luck to I all of you. Hate driving. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so where can everybody find you if they want to or if um, you want them to? You could follow, um, let's see, just like our page and follow me that way because. I have a Twitter, but it got hacked, so I still can't even get into my own oh, Twitter. So I was looking for like personal addresses and things like. Oh, that. it's um. No. <laughs> we usually give those out at the end. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah Facebook... you have to listen to the whole episode, <laughs> and we'll give you our addresses. Yeah. like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash app in pod a p p i n p o d. Throw a like on the page, and we post our episodes there every week. And I don't, that's about it. And sometimes pictures. Yeah, rarely. So. Enough about us. Intro's over. Now, Josh? Yes. Where can everybody find you on social media or in live person? Um, well, my home address is... Okay, good. Well, I mean, if you want to do it now, fine. Break the show rule, but... Yeah, you're right. No, I'm not going to do that. Because um, I respect the show too much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. You. But, uh, yeah, Chop and Walk every Thursday night. And I'm pretty lazy about getting out lately. So that's probably about it. Oh, wow. I am on Facebook. And Josh, Bing- I am on Tinder actually. <laughs> I fucking love Tinder. Okay, well, I want to talk more about that. Sorry, okay. To interrupt you. Um, yeah, it's just Josh Bingenheimer. At, I don't know how to do that. Just search Josh Bingenheimer. <laughs> how do you spell your name? It's so Facebook. easy to spell. Oh yeah, it's yeah. B is in boy, I N G E N H E I M as in Mary E R. Very good. You've spelled it's it. It's impressive. Uh, a couple times. I mean, it took a while. I don't. I don't do cursive Did anymore. Did you hate scantrons I, in school? You'd then have to like, <laughs> like color bubbles. in each letter of your, your name. No, I thought it was cool because the teachers would give me extra time. Oh, well Yeah, done. yeah. So I scored like an extra five minutes to fail that test. <laughs> just just to get teachers. your name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nancy, you were so excited when Josh was on Tinder. You're a married oh. woman. Well, I like um, people post these 
this guy did a picture photo shoot of himself. I saw that. Of, um, acting like the girls that post their profile pictures on Tinder, and he just did such a good job. It was so damn funny. Do you remember any of them? Yeah. So, I mean, I, to describe them, it'll sound stupid, but... Well, you, you're, you're, you liked like him, but making... he didn't swipe right on you. I okay, remember okay, you were so talking how about that. this work, this Tinder? How does this work? Okay, so it's uh, fucking great. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it just hooks up to your Facebook. It links to your Facebook. So you post, like you take pictures off your profile, and that's how it decides whether or not you're a real person. Um, they've uh, gotten the prostitutes off, which is good, so I feel more clean about the whole process. <laughs> um, also a little less successful. But that's all right. Yeah. Um, but you got to be saving more money that way. No. I wouldn't pay him. You don't? No. Yeah, no, nah, no, me either. Business. That's stupid. No. Paying a hooker for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you can punch as hard as I can, I mean, a lot of things come free. A lot of things come free. But um, but yeah. So anyway, like I I got on it because after after a crappy breakup, I was like, well, I don't want to go out in public. But then I'd just be like, oh wait, there's still attractive women in the world. And then, after a while, I got laid, thanks to Tinder. Yeah? I had a very sweet, volatile, two-week relationship. <laughs> Was so, it a mutual two-week relationship? I mean, if you can punch really hard, you know. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It was. It was mutual. And the, the breakup was mutual, too. What's great about Tinder relationships is you don't break up. You just kind of stop. Like, unfollow each other or whatever. Talking to each other, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is how most of my relationships start. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how are you? Just Where are you start going? by yeah. punching them in the face. <laughs> and if they stick He's around, He's had maybe. so many relationships in bars. Yeah, yeah. So what, is your success rate pretty high? Oh, I don't use it that much. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah no, it's just kind of great every now and then. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, yeah, you talk to somebody and then you're like, yeah, I talked to a girl. And then you feel good about yourself for like a day. You're like, she, she swiped, right? I did too. I hope that wasn't a mistake. And if they respond, <laughs> you're pretty sure it wasn't. You got something. Yeah. There's something, something there. Nice. Are you good at texting with girls? No. I hate, I hate using the phone. Tinder was good because it taught me how to use Facebook because I don't do anything with Facebook. And I was like, I need pictures. And then I don't really have pictures unless people have like, tagged me in pictures. So I went through and tried to figure out how to put pictures on Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm retarded. <laughs> I really wish that people still use typewriters, you know, <laughs> just so it wasn't so apparent how bad I am at things. I don't know. Uh, if it's not you it porn, I don't know how to, to get like, to it. <laughs> gets, everything gets mailed to Tinder, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <we're... laughs> Oh, these girls are killing me with the postage. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even like me. I keep on getting returned to sender. <laughs> I don't know her last name. It's just Jackie. Yeah, yeah. 31 years old. How is she old? only 12 miles away right now? <laughs> I'm so drunk. I'm way too close to Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, do you do any other online dating at all? No, because right now I'm very broke. So people judge me, and I'm like, this is like a poor man's match.com. And I've talked to people that do match.com or like Plenty of Fish, and those are all bank sites too. So when people find out that I do Tinder... I'm a little upset that I get looked down upon for that. Because I'm like, one, you can put a price on love. And right now it's $20 a month is too much. So, yeah, I put a price on love. And the girl that I met was actually pretty cool. It just turned out that she was, you know, nuts. A lunatic. And I've, I've told people that. And every girl has been like, well, we're all nuts. So it's what <laughs> level of nuts can you handle? And I was like, I guess single. <laughs> I can fucking handle single for right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do online dating. I think it's so douchey, which is funny because it's not like I'm just crushing it with women when I go out. Like I should no, be I looking you for said any this. way. Yeah, I, yeah. This I was don't. in one of your acts, and yeah. I, I was just like, I'm not going to laugh or support a single thing he says after this. <laughs> Why? I want to hear it. Tell me. Uh, no, because then I said I did do it, but it was just part of the, the bit. I just said I went, I went online to an online dating site. I finally did it, and I filled out the whole questionnaire that they ask about yourself and then i hit submit and it matched me up and the first person it matched me up with was my ex-wife <laughs> i saw that that was so funny <laughs> that's hilarious so you 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 ruined your one chance at love that's i think match.com accepted you 
just so that they can make fun of you. They're Wait, like, no, this will be hilarious. Sure. I was on yeah. Ancestry.com. <laughs> yeah, you can. He was so pissed that he didn't link with his cousin. <laughs> Ancestry dot com. Yeah. yeah, she graduated from Brown. <laughs> what a woman! <laughs> Wait, tell me you can't. How do you not get accepted on a match dot com? I I don't know. They ask you a lot of questions. I guess my fear of rejection is what's really keeping me away from match dot com. Not not the twenty dollars a month, but just like man, if they tell me that I can't even get into this club, <laughs> <laughs> but you they still do have to pay. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it happening to people. Really? Yeah, I mean, I I really haven't looked that much into it, <laughs> but I've heard that that's what happens. You have to fill out, like, a whole questionnaire. So if they're like, um, rape is a hobby, it takes you out of this pool. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, forget that's it. That's not a hobby wow. of mine. I just couldn't think of a terrible hobby. Right. Maybe if you're a guy that puts knitting, they're like, you're not really You know where, speed. actually, there's rapemeetup.com that you can probably <laughs> sign up for. There's something yeah. like that. No, somebody was telling me about that. No, that because black people meet. Misconnection. Whoa. What? It's look. It's not a stereotype. If I kind of think it's true. <laughs> you got to stop hanging out with so many football players. That's not like a good sample. <laughs> that goddamn Duke lacrosse team yeah. really changed it up for white guys too. I, yeah. I wasn't really happy with all. It's that weird. As soon as you're around athletes, you just start drinking your face off. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you're asking for it. It's true. The it's only true. time I've ever seen him wear a dress was when we went to a Suns game. <laughs> you can either wear panties or not sit like that, is I remember one of the pieces of advice that I gave to you. So. I, look, that was a weird time in my life. And I get that it was just a couple of weeks ago. It was a Mercury game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the only way you can get a woman at a Mercury game, dress up like another woman. Yeah. I did. I did think it was pretty cool the way you tucked it back. Though I was like, I couldn't tell. And I was like, no, it just looks extra beefy. <laughs> Hidden talents. Uh, hidden for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Enough about me. <laughs> no, we should talk more about all this. I like this. Um, no, let's not. So, how did? Uh, well, I had a question I really wanted to ask, and then I forgot it, of course, because <laughs> then you threw that dress thing at me, and mm-hmm. I had to pretend it was fake in my little <laughs> tones. Uh, oh, have you ever, like, I don't really know professional athletes that well, but, like, I, I get super giddy around them. Yeah. Are you the same way? Do you, like, know some professional athletes? You know what's weird is, like, yeah, those are, for the most part, no, but I saw, um, let's see here, recently, uh... Brandon Webb came into my brother's tennis store, and I, yeah. And the whole time I was talking to him, it was weird. I, I'm sure he was weirded out because I just, in my head, I just had this monologue running that was just saying, don't tell me really needs to come and pitch for the Diamondbacks again because that's all I wanted to say because I'm a D-backs fan and we suck. And I was like, it'd be really great if you could get on the mound again. Like, as a joke, but I don't think he would laugh because he spent, like, four years trying to get back on the mound. So that wouldn't have been good. And then uh, the first time I ever, like, wasn't able to speak to somebody where I was just speechless was meeting Harmon Killebrew. I got really weird. Like, I think my dad had to, like, lift my arm and hand it to him (laughs) to shake it. How old were you? I was in fourth grade. So I, I, I would never do my homework, and so... Um, my teacher's name was Miss Killebrew. So on the first day of school, I, I raised my hand. I was like, are you related to Harmon Killebrew? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so then she found out I'm, I'm, I was a huge everything. baseball fan. Well, I, no, I still wouldn't. And so eventually she figured out that I, I could get good grades if I just got bribed. And so she's like, if you get all your work done and you get, like, whatever grade on everything, I'll get you a Harmon Killebrew autograph. So I ended the year with, like, all kinds of autographs, baseballs and cards and all this stuff. It was pretty sweet. So then he was doing a signing, and I went to it, and he knew all about me because he had to sign yeah. all these baseballs for this retarded fourth grader. <laughs> you know, it's like, why is this? Which, let's yeah, be is honest. this what's wrong with this autistic <laughs> yeah, kid? Why is he obsessed with fifties <laughs> baseball players? How does he know who the senators are? And um, so I met him, and he knew who I was, and it just it freaked me out. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am That's a uh, good teacher. It's 
funny. Yeah. I'm one of those teachers that cares. There's the ones that come to school drunk with their pants off, and then there's that teacher. <laughs> I would have preferred teacher. that teacher. The teacher number one. Grade. I don't know. I was a weird and kid. The drunken teacher yeah. of like high school. I think she was just like trying to relate to the. I children. had one of those drunken teachers in high school, but I didn't. I you didn't drove get her to. to drink. No, 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 but I'm pretty sure that there was one dude that banged her. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. See, that's a was teacher. it her husband? No. Oh. <laughs> Another teacher that cares for the students. Good teachers. Yeah. Yeah. I hated her because I never got the vibe. You know? yeah, sorry, uh, I always saw her tossing it other people's way. And I was like, you know, I was a good looking kid in high school. I believe you, man. Yeah. I mean, you can see traces of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, were you a class clown? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You get in trouble a lot, or was it funny enough to where they let it slide and the teachers would laugh with you? Yeah, no, I, I got away with it for the most part. Um, yeah, yeah, it always worked. Except for, like, I would have these, uh, I don't know, I, I had ADHD. Well, I guess I still do. But anyway, I'm better at it. But I used to, like, <laughs> I, I would have these, like, laughing fits. Like, something would make me laugh, and I couldn't stop thinking about how funny it was. And so I wouldn't be able to stop laughing. So it was a great way to get out of class. Because after a while, the teacher was like, I can't yell at him because that he just thinks that's funny, that he's getting in trouble for laughing. Uh-huh. So she would just send me outside, so I'd just have to go out. Like, I, I would just start laughing, and I'd kind of lift my hand up as, like, an apology and just kind of chuckle as I walked out. And then I'd come in when I was able to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Weird. Weird. But but then in sixth grade, I, I, uh, that was still happening. I wouldn't get kicked out. I would just kind of cover my face, and that was fine. But then I was always late, so she would, I don't know, I would show up late, and then she would kick me out until lunch. But, like, all the classes you, like, all the subjects I didn't care to do, like math and science and all that shit, that was all in the beginning of the day. So I would just, like, casually get myself to school, and then I'd go to the front office, and the front office ladies like me, so they'd give me, like, Snickers candy bars and stuff, or I'd go around with the janitor and fix things. And, uh, Work in the system. Yeah, and, and then at lunch, somebody would come and get me, and I'd go have lunch and go to recess, and then, you know, it was like, hey, it's time for reading. And I'm like, cool, I can read a book. Yeah, that's a so you time. skipped out on class, you just went straight to life experience. You're like, I'm a good yeah, janitor. Yeah, I learned how to yeah. call it in and do the bare minimum at a very young age. <laughs> So, I don't know. I, now I kind of wish that they would have tried harder. Is that yeah. how your comedy came about? Like, did you always want to be in this business? No. I, uh, no, I give, you know how they'd vote yeah. things? Yeah. Like, uh, Residents and stuff? Yeah, and they were really polite. So, so they weren't like, most likely to work at your brother's tennis store. They were like, <laughs> most likely to be a comedian. And I, uh, I'm actually a failed actor right now. And so a buddy of mine, like, I didn't want to do Arizona film anymore. And a buddy of mine was like, well, do this. That way you're still actively doing something. Mm-hmm. And that's how it came about. Cool, like man. Comedy. So you've done. It works. You're an, you've been an actor. You are an actor. I don't know yeah. anything about that side of the career. So let's get into it, man. How did that uh, You about? know, I wouldn't really call it a career. No. I, I would stay away from career. <laughs> I would say uh, I don't know anything about that. Semi successful hobby. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't was know. That, did you always want to act or did you fall into it? Like, I kind of fell into that. How? Like, I always well, thought it'd be cool, but, you know, I grew up in Arizona. So that's, and I have, I have a very practical family. So you don't tell them I want to be an actor because they're like, God, I, I thought there was maybe a chance of success with you, but now. <laughs> why did we give you college it? money? We should have just set that up some other way, a stipend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turns out that would have been a good idea. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I, I, I love film, and uh, Buddy's band was going to be doing a music video. So I, I ran into him, and he's like, hey, you know, come do this. And I was like, you can't just give me a role. It's kind of a big deal. And he's like, yeah, no, yeah, you'd have to audition. You'd have to win it, but come on down. And the record company changed the treatment, so that, that role wasn't there. But I still went to hang out, and we had a great time. And uh, there were two actors there that did a really good job, and I watched them, and I was just like, I know I can do this. Yeah. So I got back, and I told my roommate that, and he was like, well, Jeff's brother is a director who's doing a film right now, so you should have him get you an audition. And I was like, that's kind of a wild coincidence. Yeah. I didn't even know his brother was a director. But yeah, it worked out. They gave me a part that they'd actually already cast. And it was funny, because like, all these actors are talking to each other in this room, and I'm I'm smoking more cigarettes than I usually do just to stay out of there. It was so uncomfortable. 
because everybody knew everybody. And finally, they, they figured out, like, I haven't talked to anybody. So they did the whole, oh, so you're new to town. I was like, no. And they're like, oh, so you just did, like, like college drama? And I was like, no. And they're like, oh, so just, like, high school drama and stuff. And I was like, no. Like, oh, gee, so you haven't acted since, like, youth theater? And I was like, I... Guys, you're making this super awkward for me. No, I've never acted before. So one by one, no joke, they went around in a circle around the room and told me what I had to do to be a real actor. And then when I showed up to set, not a single one of those people was there. And I was like, I guess you don't know either. (laughs) That would be an awesome slap in the face to them. I know. I almost invited them. I was like, hey, guys, watch watch me be a real actor. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. So... And then what happens? You do that audition, you get the part over all these people. What happens from there? I did the film. Yeah? <laughs> but I mean, was like, it a lot of work? Uh, well, I, I didn't know anything about it, so I, I got, like, I guess pretty method. Like, I would, um, I just read the script a lot and figured out where this kid was coming from, and he was a pretty messed up character. So I just started figuring out how he viewed the world. So I would start, like, I'd order my sandwich at subway through his point of view and um yeah so you just bring out this guy and and he's the type of person where you could meet him and maybe he'd seem a little off but he just seemed sort of normal or quiet but he was this insane narcissist with all of these inferiority uh inferiority complexes and so just a really angry person. So I'd, I'd get like really uncomfortable and angry ordering my sub and make my way through it. Yeah, weird stuff like that, which was cool because as soon as they said action, like I was able to do it, but I became this nut job. Um, and you actually carry that around with you for a while afterwards. And so it was good that I have really close friends because they were like, yeah, that's... Josh, you should probably stop drinking whiskey because Cockmaster, <laughs> which was the character's name, would kind of come out. Cockmaster. He wasn't gay. He was hyper-masculine. That was his net handle. It was a movie about all these people that are part of like a snuff and just bizarre website. They meet up to watch somebody get killed, and it turns out it's them that are going to get killed. Yeah. Weird, so. dude. What's the name of it? You don't have Death you don't Factory, to see it. the oh, bloodletting. That's when I looked up. I looked you up because oh. Kevin told me you were coming on. So I looked up your some of the films you were in. They look really scary. I can't watch scary movies. So yeah, no, most of them are happen. really, really awful. Um, <laughs> Still, you not, did it. Yeah, uh, Death Factory was actually really cool though. Yeah, how that long was ago fun was to do. That? that was a long time ago. I was like, uh, I don't know, twenty one or twenty two. How old are you now? Twenty nine. Man. I know. Sweet. I'm always like, aww. Yeah, aww, little buddy. <laughs> I hate being this old. <clears throat> but Nancy, you like this because Josh plays tennis too. Oh, I like tennis. Nancy loves tennis. Do you yeah. play? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Where, what's your brother's tennis? Is it in All about tennis. Oh, yeah, I know all about, I know all about tennis. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> have you been there? I have been there. And really? I used to work at a club that we, all the The clothing. Buzz? No, all the clothing. No, not that. Oh, club. okay. Um, Phoenix Country Club. So all the yeah. clothes and everything we sold came from all that tennis. Yeah. But I haven't worked there in a couple months, so okay. I'm really out of the game. Yeah. Of selling women's tennis clothes. <laughs> yeah. I was employed for like a couple months. This is really costing me more in gas to get down there than I was getting paid. So yeah, that doesn't really work yeah. out. Yeah, I'm I'm actually home. out of the game of selling women's tennis clothes now too. They don't know me around it. I'm still in the game of wearing women's he tennis clothes. He models them. Though. That's true. Like a pro. <laughs> Did, was tennis your sport growing up? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was your main one. Yeah, because we've talked softball before. I'm not saying that's a sport uh-huh. growing up on. No. But maybe baseball. You're a big baseball fan. Yeah, I I loved baseball, but it's tough to admit I was actually kind of a little afraid of the ball when I was bad. Yeah, I was. I I loved I loved playing defense. Like I loved like shortstop, third base. It's mm-hmm. just weird. I I don't know. Well, dude, back then, like, nobody had stuff. control. Like yeah. you get hit enough times, and you're like, screw this. If I'm ready to swing, that means I'm probably not going to duck in time. <laughs> so I'll just go up there, bet on them walking me, which was a pretty safe bet. Yep. And then just run around for a sec. Yeah, man, that's so true. Those kids had no control back then. You would stand... I would... Like, my favorite thing was bunting, just because I was fast back then, and I wouldn't have to stand in there and, like, 
just wait to see if it's going to hit me, I'd already be turned to get out of the way or just drop the bat. You know what's sad is like every time I would go up there and I'd be like, all right, I'm – People are starting to think that I, I'm a girl. I should. I'm gonna have to swing this time. I would always get a hit. So maybe if I would have just, I don't know. I don't think I got yelled at enough. I think my parents were too supportive. You know, <laughs> they never told me, Josh. You know that the parents are making fun of you. You're really embarrassing the shit out of our family. Um, so you can change your last name, or you can start swinging at the pitch. And they called you Joshy. <laughs> no, they just called me kid. <laughs> Yeah, on, yeah, or or Carly. They would they would call me girl names a lot, and I was like, guys, I'm I'm crushing it on hot corner. They're like, you should be wearing hot pants. Nancy, what's the hey hot girl? Corner? Get up there and swing the pad. No, what is hot corner? Take a guess. Like, I don't know. Take a guess. Like a hooker stand. All right, like that's not stand, that's, I like that. That's <laughs> it's way better than playing third base. Yeah. Is that what? Wait, what's it called? Hot corner. The hot corner. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But now if you I go to the played. yeah That's now cool. now if you go to hot corner and you only get to third base you're pissed. Yeah. The only thing I ever did on that baseball game. Like, good thing I can hit really hard. Was a kickball games. That's the only time I ever used the diamond the baseball diamond. Slosh ball. Oh, slosh ball. What's slosh ball? Is what? it better than kickball? You yeah uh for adults. Yeah. Oh, is it like a like a league? You have a keg on second I base. I want to play that. Yeah. It's Join awesome. A league. No, but there's different ways to play it, I think. Where like I've heard I've only played it, I think, twice. And it was different both times. But you get to second base. Wait, you start off with a beer in your hand, Yeah, I think. And I, then you kick. You run to second base if you can get there, if you don't get out. Yeah. And then you drink your beer. And then you fill up another one. And Where's then, the keg? Is it like I, it's, on, it's on it's second It's base. like the oh, base. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would think yeah. that would be hot corner. No. No. Okay. I, no. That's... So. I can't even talk kickball with this poor guy. I can't even talk kickball. Like I thought, (laughs) that sounds like fun. I could talk tennis. Can you play tennis? I actually see the only sport I play. I can talk tennis. tennis. How's that U.S. Open going? (laughs) Do you know anything? You know I don't watch TV. (laughs) I'm actually bummed right now because right now Roger Federer is playing. Oh shit! And yeah, that's That's why I was open. Match man. It actually is, and Federer when I left was getting it handed to him. No shit. Yeah. So, Djokovic beat Murray last night. Was it last night or today? Yeah, it was last night, but it was... I need to start betting on things that I know. Do you? Yeah. I used to be way into the U.S. Open. It was kind of weird. Like, every time I would fill out brackets and stuff. You're kidding me. No, just for the U.S. Open. (laughs) Yeah. I really would. Oh, I meant to ask you, Kevin, are you in a league this year? Fantasy football? Yeah. Um, Okay, so look, last year, guys, we did our fantasy football league. Oh. Do you want to see what's going on with the Monfils match? Yeah, I do, actually. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like last year I we did a fantasy there. football team Holy shit. for the show, and we came in dead last. It was awful. Because <laughs> I was your partner. No, it had nothing to do with that. Every <laughs> week, somebody got hurt on yes. our team. Every our team fucking start week. Out good. And it would be a major person that would get hurt. So we get zero points for that player. We'd lose, and then we just stopped giving a shit. Never changed our lineup. We lost 11 games in a row. <laughs> wow. Why are you we doing this strong. again? So I said I would never do it again. It was I fun, fucking though. Hated it was really it. fun. I liked it. I you have, it. that's funny. You have a relationship with fantasy football. A it little bit. It treats you poorly, yeah. and you're like, no, I'm well, done. Well, you won't maybe, ever maybe this join one will be a different. league unless you already had that kind of relationship with football because that's. Like I grew up as a Cardinals fan, so I, I don't I don't even really appreciate football much. I'm like, oh yeah, that thing that ruins the winter. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Here's what I don't get about, like just how everybody loves football because I love football too. But like, how many people really want to hang out with your average football player? You know what I'm saying? Like like when when you when you listen to uh, who's who's the guy that does. Cardinals radio. Ron Wolfley. I oh, fucking yeah, hate Wolfley. Him. He's a so he has thing. like the most. He, I don't know. He said something hilarious. Oh, that guy. Where where it, he oh, it he was, was just re- yeah, yeah yeah I, I had to make fun of it yeah because he he was just it, he had like a thesaurus open he's like football tells you everything about a man <laughs> you know watching him how he plays at the beginning and how he finishes. Oh, that kills my throat. So I can't keep going with that. <laughs> I well, love that. Right, he said, all, he said like, it shows you if he's strong, if he's tough, 
<laughs> if he's dirt, I'm like, dude, put. What do you? Do they pay you by the word? No, or, is this like that comes print? out of his mouth. He just speaks. That's what he does, and that's what I love about him. He just says anything, and that funny no, voice. His but, voice doesn't match his what he looks like. No, he like wears like khakis and yeah. shit. He doesn't speak you think English. He'd have like a cut off tank top and just. Like, it's <laughs> weird though because he's he's talking about all these guys that have to be kind of tough if they're in the NFL in the first place. But but he's like judging who they are as a person based on how they play this. So I'm like, how does this guy look at the average dude? You know what I'm saying? Like like if you're a piece of shit because you don't finish on a third down. <laughs> what does he think about the guy that's making a sandwich? You know? How does he feel about the pool boy? Yeah. Maybe he has like a totally different voice for those people, like a normal voice. No, I bet it gets even deeper. Really? I bet he just <laughs> chuckles when he closes the door. I think he should host or do the um Radio for what's that fucking show? I love American Ninja Warrior. That he'd yeah. be great at that. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's weird to me because like that whole culture of like you've got to be this macho man, and like it's like dude, yeah. most of us are just dudes. And they're like, <laughs> no, I know, most of you are pussies. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's totally. like how everybody gets all into like UFC and stuff, and that's cool. I it's fun to watch people hit each other. But then at the same time, all the dudes that I knew that were super into fighting were huge cocksuckers. Yeah. We're huge assholes. <laughs> so I don't know why all of a sudden, like, when they get really great at beating the crap out of people, you're like, oh, this dude's awesome. It's like, do you know how he got into this sport in the first place? He was so good at beating the shit out of <laughs> random people that he's like, I could do this for a living. <laughs> I'm going to go be king asshole. <laughs> Probably retire that way. You know what? He's right. He yeah. Right. Very, That's what's weird right. about it. Because I still fall into it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm all about football. But then I'm like, why am I so into this? Yeah. I watch it These because These dudes I would love bang sports. my girlfriend and laugh about it because I can't do anything about <laughs> totally. it. Totally. Man, yeah. Yeah. I, I oh, shit. The Bentley's outside time. of my house. Looks like my girlfriend's going out again. <laughs> Football is, first of all, it's slow as shit to watch. It's slower than baseball. Yeah, it's something like 12 it's minutes. minutes. Yeah, something like that. And people yeah. talk shit about anyway, And baseball's I like 18 baseball. minutes. That's yeah. how much action you actually watch when you're sitting there for the three hours watching a game. Really? 11 yeah. minutes of football compared to 18 minutes of baseball. Football's more boring than baseball if you're going to put it in those terms. Hmm. Yeah. And then if you sit she's there not, watch, she's not like, buying into it, nah, but I, I'm, I'm so on board. Somebody scores a touchdown, a they kick the extra game. point, they go to commercial. Then they come back for the kickoff, kicks out of the end zone, then they go to commercial. It's like, why even fucking bother showing the kickoff? Okay, maybe, but when you go to a game, don't you have more fun at a football game than a baseball game? I have fun I usually at all leave games. early for baseball games. I never leave early for football. Baseball games are fun because they actually do shit in between each inning. What? Race, ketchup, mustard, and yeah, relish? Yeah, whatever. They just do different things hey. to kind of keep you... Yeah. Keep you you can come up with drinking games based on that, and that's a lot of fun. Who's doing the halftime Super Bowl this year? I, I, I thought they announced it. They did, and Is it's... Is it Katy Perry? No. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Else. Yeah. I I have a no, huge Katy Perry up. thing. All right, I'm going to look it up. Oh, you like Katy Perry? She's great. Yeah, that's on the eyes oh, and geez. on the body. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, are you claiming that you one time had sex with Katy Perry? No. She's mm-hmm. awesome. I'm admitting it. on my blow job. Oh, it's Rihanna Coldplay. Oh wait. Hold on. That'll be cool. That's kind of a weird yeah, mashup. Katy Perry, it said. I have a huge thing for Rihanna, too. I just, I think, I don't think that I really, it doesn't matter. Is she a girl? Cool. <laughs> yeah, it could yeah. be Diana Ross, and I was like, I could get one up for her. Dude, she, Diana Ross did it last time it was in, oh no, two times ago in Arizona. Like back in 1990-something, oh. I went to that game. And it was, Diana Ross was the halftime show. Yeah, my dad kept calling her Tina Turner, and I was like, that's so racist. You know what you're saying? Tina Turner. I like Tina Turner. Yeah. Oh, um, my favorite female comedian died today. That's sad. Yep. Joan Rivers. She was awesome. It's so weird because she was so spunky just like a few weeks ago watching that Fashion Police. Yeah, medication. It can do anything. Yeah. I mean, she definitely lived a long time, so it's not that sad. It's sad, but... Yeah, yeah she I know, made that's it to eighty one, so There's... I'm not like devastated. Wes Welker actually claims that his sample came from a party at her house. Really? Yeah. yeah. His sample? <laughs> yeah, he had amphetamines in his in his urine in his oh. body. And um yeah. Molly. 
Molly. Oh, Joan Rivers does that. Oh, no, just the amphetamines. I, I don't think she happy. wanted the calm part. No. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's sad. We comedians just keep dying. This yeah, has been a rough it's not year been for a comedians good year for trying to live. So yeah, well, that's why we're trying to tone our comedian stuff down to the end of the year. Really. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not going to make anybody laugh in memory of of those two. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, Joan Rivers to me was uh, like when I was a kid. I watched Hollywood Squares, and she was the center square, and I loved that show. So that was like my first real taste of her. And then uh, once oh, you have on. a taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You never go back. <laughs> yeah, dude, no. Why are you implying oh, that you've hooked up with sure. all of these celebrities? You know, I've, I've <laughs> a very interesting life behind She was actually exterior. really bony on the body. She was mm-hmm. really bony on the body. <laughs> well, so she was 81. Yeah, kind of awful on the eyes, but she oh, had I a dimmer think switch. So. Did she, she, she looked she good looked for good. 81 now. Yeah. Right? Like I mean, for 81. Yeah, no, she you did. Never think she was 81. She looked horrible from 40 to 80. <laughs> yeah. 81 was her year. Yeah, that, yeah, she finally grew into her body. Yeah, you looked at her and you're like, that's not what a cadaver looks like at all. She's doing great. <laughs> I thought she was so funny, but I had to wonder like, I, there's got to be some celebrities out there that just hate her because she just bags on yeah. anyone and says the greatest things about, you know, whoever she didn't like at the moment. And you have to wonder if there was people out there that are like, Fucking thank God. I just thank always God thought that was gone. terrible to just completely tear somebody down because their dress was offensive to her, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, uh, she went so after in 2009, they did the Comedy Central roast for Joan Rivers. Uh, and we did a joke for writing for Geraldo, and Geraldo said it, and it got aired, which was cool, was uh, like Joan Rivers supposedly says what everyone is thinking, which is bullshit. Because I've never heard you once say, why does my face fucking look like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wrote that joke? No, I was part of the writing with Geraldo for the... No the shit, system. that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, look at this, we're getting uh, to you know, know each hey, other. Uh, so, I, yeah, anyways, go back and watch it, everybody. She passed away. It's fun. She would probably appreciate it because she had a good time at that thing. Yeah, she would really. It would really mean a lot to her. Yeah, right now. Because Kevin knows her very yeah. personally. I don't. I don't. I. I really don't. She was on uh, your Tinder. Yeah. I, I, that's what right, they matched you with. They matched you a with cadaver? John Rivers. <laughs> that's how sexy you are. <laughs> <laughs> she went way. I don't even think they allow that age range, do they? I don't think they do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like what, how, oh, you, you know what though? I oh, here's here's fair. something that freaked me out. I. Because sometimes I I won't really I'll just be like ah that's a good picture I don't know now now that I'm older I can't really gauge age so like I don't hit on any young girls like if you're like 23 oh, or 24 yeah. I'm not hitting on you because yeah. you could be 13. Um, I do the same thing. Yeah, I can't tell. Yeah. But anyway, this girl she looked like she was like 24, so I liked it. And then um, it it matched us later on. I noticed, and uh, then it said. That she was eighteen, I was like, "Well, that's kind of pointless." Yeah, like that's I don't, gross. I don't know what the fuck we would. Do. Well, I do, I do, <laughs> but it would be awkward, you know, because she'd, she'd, really she'd come over with her book bag or something, right. yeah, and I'd be you like, "I can't homework. help you with your math because I didn't do that when I was your age." That's true. Um, but no, so then I I forgot about this, but kids. You had to be a certain age to have a Facebook. So, like, 12 year olds would say that they were like whatever age you had to be, like 16 or 18. Yeah. yeah, so this girl went back and she fixed her Facebook, and all of a sudden she was 17. And I was like, Amber Alert, get the fuck <laughs> off my phone. You know, what are you doing yeah. here? How, how'd you get on this? Chris and, Hansen walks in Josh's door. <laughs> yeah. You fucking predator. Yeah, well, I, I, I almost set her up to be like, you know, like, you know, what are you doing on here? You're going to get somebody in trouble and you really shouldn't be on a site like this. Like some fatherly advice. And then, then I was like, no, would... you should not reach out to this girl. No, don't. Because then she'd text you back and be like, oh, well, maybe you're the one to teach me. And she would just draw you in and get you in trouble. Because she's on there looking for people. Men, yeah. Oh, my you know. God. I, I actually, I got this one girl's number. Um, How did I get it? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. I spend a lot of time drunk. Anyway, I got this girl's phone number. She was super hot. I was stoked about it. And I even told the buddy, I was like, I think I'm going to bang this girl. So, oh, I met her at a show. And so we're talking. And then all of a sudden, like, it's she just randomly out of nowhere, the conversation is going well. I'm like, yes. She randomly drops that she's, like, 17. And I just had the biggest panic attack. Because then I'm like, this is all text. Like, this is... 
They can print yeah. this out. This All they have to do is talk to AT and T, and I'm in jail. This is evidence. Yeah. And it she's was lying. Terrifying. Usually, if they admit it to being 17, terrifying. they're usually lying in their 15. Because 17 is close to 18, but they don't feel oh, good about lying. Oh, I was hoping that you were going to say, like, the opposite. Like, she's probably, like, 20, but into kinky shit and hoping that I am, too. You know? No. No. You yeah, careful. you're probably right. Yeah. Okay, and this is a it question a I really wonder about this with, you, with you guys. When guys that are older date younger girls... And, you know, obviously there's perks to that, but is there also the flip side? Like, I can't s- typically stand people that are significantly younger than me. So is there, like, the other side that's like, oh, I think well, it she's all depends bed, on the person. I don't know. Is she, like, just terrible to hang out with? Yeah, probably. Because you get to the I know some of girls are awful to hang out with, too. But, no, you know, like, I actually, I normally go for older chicks because they don't put pressure on me to, like, hey, let's. I, once, once, a, once somebody has decided that they're not going to have a kid. Then, like, they take life so much more relaxed, and I think that's all. I Basically, you either have to have a kid or never want a kid. Dude, there's nothing scarier than meeting a 34-year-old woman that's never been married, never had kids, and wants both. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's... yeah, That's, that's fucking scary. Yeah, that's, that's not crazy cool. crazy train? Yeah. yeah, that's not cool. Okay. That's like... I yeah. hey, I just met you, yeah. and we're going to Vegas to get married because I'm pregnant already yeah. with your child. You're Whoa. nuts and <laughs> stupid. You haven't been able to trick one guy into a broken condom yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the scariest shit in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, yeah, it, I guess it depends on the person. You're right. I'm just asking because I just feel like I've calmed down so much being the age that I am. That hanging out with people significantly younger than me, I would get annoyed very easily. Yeah, but you also get annoyed hanging out with 34-year-old women. Oh, I can't stand them. Right? I See, I think it's more that you just don't like people. I think that's... That's true yeah. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. before we started recording, you, you were saying terrible things about the elderly. Yeah. And <laughs> was I? Yeah. Yeah, it was... I mean, it was bad. It was rough. It was something where, like, I don't really know you that well yet, so I judged you pretty harshly on it. But, well, I mean, you, right. you like Joan Rivers, so... I do. That's just yeah. funny. just saying that. She does it. Yeah. I like that she's yeah. dead. Nice Facebook I mean, post. I like yeah. that. Fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nancy, so why do you hate old people? I, I don't remember hating Is them. It When's the, the smell? last time you called your grandparents? Names. Well, no, not names. Not names, but like called them on yeah, the that, phone. Right. Okay. Let's go there. Okay. Uh, I don't have any living grandparents yeah. except one. Look who's got the smile on her face. As she I says know. It. Except one, and she lives maybe 20 minutes away from her, me, and I see her maybe three times, four times Lies. a year. Lies. So, you know, wow. I saw her recently. Just enough to stay in the will. That's really she's calculated. I think she's fond of me, but <laughs> other than that, she's great. <laughs> oh, Nats. Ah, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm a, yeah, I'm a disappointment. It's probably you by choice. Yeah. You hate kids, that's for I sure. I do hate kids. Well, rightfully so. Yeah. I know kids. Yeah. I hate them. They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Josh. Do you like kids and old people? Do you want kids? I love old people. Unless they, unless they talk a lot about nonsense. Like Vietnam? The Civil War? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I love it when they talk about the Civil War. I like it when they <laughs> until it gets it. really racist, and then I'm like, Uncle Jerry, stop. <laughs> I would like to see a reenactment. You kids, it's different with you kids. You're all the same. You you don't you don't see colors, but yet just yet, yet just trust me. I don't know if they've changed or or us as a people have changed. I don't know if it's good, but uh, but I don't know. Just you know, things are real different. I'm just glad I'm going to be out of here soon. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Uncle Jerry, are you dying? No, but I'm gonna kill myself. I see. I I don't know. <laughs> Josh, I heard you were you you were dating a black girl. Yeah, I, I I was dating a black girl. I almost killed myself then when I heard that. I, it's just any day I could do it. I'm I'm gonna snap. Your Uncle Jerry is gonna snap. Man, I've thought about dating a black girl just so my parents would finally just hate me. <laughs> oh, I don't have a racist Uncle Jerry either. I, I want to put that man. one out hey, what's there. What's his name then? Dad. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> How did you, uh, so when you start with acting, how'd you get into the comedy stuff? When did you start doing stand up and wanting to kind of pursue that? Uh, I helped my buddy Dustin Elkin. He had, he, he spent like a year preparing to do comedy. Yeah, okay. like just going to nonstop comedy shows and talking to comics and watch, and I don't know. So he, 
he had like three giant poster boards full of jokes. Um, and he came to ask me because he, he was worried about stage presence. So I was like, yeah, that's something I could probably help you out with. And then I helped him, you know, like just look at the jokes and like, all right, this joke actually goes into here. And like this would segue into this. So we like move things around together. And he was crushing. He was doing pretty well. And he was trying to get me to do it. And I, I'm like, I don't really know how to put a joke together. Um, well, I mean, I guess I do. But I, I don't know what's funny, really. I, so... The confidence is oozing out of you at this point. Yeah, right? I'm just such... Well, it kind of is. It's like a bad, you know, bad comedy. This is good open mic comedy right here, where it's just rambling and stupid. Um, no, but so he he's the one that got me into it. Because after a while, he wouldn't leave me alone about it. And I was like, fine, I'll, I'll go be terrible. And it actually wasn't awful. Yeah. This, typically, it's not for the first time. Did you prepare? Um, Like... Really hurriedly, like the hour before I went up. Yeah? Yeah, like in the car and stuff. How long ago was that? I don't know. That was like three years ago. Yeah. That was... Do you, do you remember the Handlebar J shows? <clears throat> no. I don't know. Anyway. I wasn't around. Whatever. Shout out Dave Mendelson. <laughs> Dave Mendelson plays tennis, by the way. Oh. Yeah, yeah. he's pretty he's good. He also is probably somebody you don't know based on your reaction. Maybe I know him. I'm looking at my Facebook You've right now. <laughs> sounds very familiar. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, shout out to Dave. Good guy. Nice <laughs> We're probably friends. Um, yeah, I hope he doesn't listen to this. He's just going to be so <laughs> I'm going to make sure to tag him in it. Yeah, I know. Because anyway. So then, all right, you run one of the most fun shows in the Valley. Yeah, it's a cool show. I love that. it. Here he is. Thank we you. have 14 mutual blast friends every this week. David. <laughs> so tell us, <laughs> tell us about the show. It's just that, you know, it's a show up, go up. So try to get there (laughs) by, uh, yep, I knew it. Try to get there (laughs) by like 8.30. The show starts at 9, sometimes a little after 9. But uh, yeah, every comic that shows up and does time, you get a free drink. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, You get five minutes. You don't have to wait around for like three or four hours to do it. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. I just like it because it's it's a real kind of community thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. And you run that show, right? Mm-hmm. I run it, and it's at Chop and Walk, yeah, which is it's... cool. It's a Chinese restaurant, which I love the food. I can't wait to go eat there tonight. Oh, don't they have those uh, pineapple things? The crab, the wontons. Yes, they have the all food Chinese. Yeah, that sounds so good right now. Yeah. And so, so and then the room that we do the, the comedy in is like off to the side a little bit, yeah. but. It's I don't know man I can't explain it's, it. I just it's, love it. It's yeah, so it's fun. it's a different place. It's got like this whole like rock and roll surf skate uh vibe going on inside. So it's really strange cuz then they're they're serving Chinese food so you can go and they oh they have Egypt. amazing beer too. They have this awesome revolving beer menu. They're always putting up great new beers. So I don't actually order beers. I just tell them to surprise me. No. And then, surprise, by the end of the night, I'm really drunk and worried about how I'm getting home. <laughs> we had, a few weeks ago, it was random, and it was it just happened the end of the night, where there was, what, like five or six of us still there, yeah. hanging out. A couple of people left to go. I think Nick went up, and then I went up. And then the show just kind of ended, but damn, it was, the, it was like one of the most fun nights ever. Yeah, it was one of the, definitely one of the best comedy experiences ever because like it was like we were hanging out in a living room and then you could heckle each other because you weren't being a dick screwing up somebody's set we were all just interacting so yeah it it was a blast until i i think nick paul said some really hateful things to (laughs) tjin and then it got awkward and he kind of got off stage and i was like well that's the end of the show because i don't know how to yeah oh shit without mediating some sort of uncomfortable resolution I think we should all just say goodnight and hope we forget about this. How did that show get started? Um, they used to have a musical open mic there. And I did a, I did a tennis lesson. I don't normally teach tennis because I'm not really that good. But I, this lady won one, and so I was like, all right, that's fine. So I met up with my brother and some of his friends there. And they were doing that. My brother threw 20 bucks on the table and was like, you know, go sing a song. And I was like, well... Because I used to be in bands, but I don't really play guitar at all anymore or anything that. like that. You do and so, so much. oh, so much, so You're badly. A yeah, I'm pretty awful at it too. The only thing that's so threatening positive. is if I actually perform, you know? 
I don't know. I know. I'm, like, it's, I'm oozing positivity. Like, yeah. So, so I, full no, but I, like the only time I play guitar, or write a song is when I'm down about something. So it's like awful shit. It's so terrible. <laughs> it's like, I just channel Robin Williams. And, um, cause anyway, that's, the, it's too soon for all of that. <laughs> it's too soon for that. I, I felt bad about that. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I went up and I just made up a funny song and then, uh, and everybody loved it. So I, I was like, thanks everybody. I just paid for my dinner. So I'm good. And everybody started chanting for one more. So I was like, all right. And I did one more. And then the, the dude was like, please do one more. And I was like, guys, I'm making these up. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm done now. Like, that's it. That's all I can come up with. And so I asked for, um, like a word and my, my brother's friend was like checkers. And I was like, you son of a bitch. You think you're going to checkmate me with that? And so I wrote a song about his checkered past. And so then. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so then uh, the next week we went back there. Oh, and then he paid me money to go up after that to go do a set. So, yeah, I was making more money doing comedy than working for fixed. him. Yeah. So, so then we would go there every week and I would just make my brother and his friends laugh and get like. 20, 30 bucks for it. It was sweet. It was good work. So, um, yeah, then, then eventually the owner said something to my brother about me hosting a show there. And finally I went down there and talked to him about it. But what's messed up is I was so worried about it being on the right night that when it came time for me to like pick a night, I was, I just jumped on Facebook. Cause I was like, I haven't thought about doing this really. And I'm about to tell him, Oh yeah, this is the night we do it. And most people voted for Thursday. And I'd completely forgotten that this nice guy that had let me go up. And he would bump me up, like, in front of musicians. Because he's like, ah, this kid's only going to do, like, three minutes worth of, like, music. Or, like, five minutes worth of stand-up. Yeah, I took a show. Oh, no. Yeah. And I didn't even realize until, like, everything had been finalized. And I was like, oh, shit. I just took this guy's job, kind of. I mean, it wasn't really my... Yeah, decision in the end, but uh, yeah, I still felt like a dick. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty <laughs> Have awful. Have you seen him or talked to him? Yeah, it was really awkward because okay. Jamie, the owner, I guess, didn't tell him that it was that the show was like permanently scratched. Oh, shit. Yeah, so one day I show up and he's there and he's like setting everything up and I'm like, uh, Jamie, what's going on? Because um, he's, did you not talk to him or is my show done? And he's like, yeah. um... I don't know, man. Didn't really get a chance to talk to him. So just, like, let him set everything up and uh, just let him go for a little bit. And then just, uh, you know, let him know that you got to do your show. And I'm like, dude, that's not my job. Like, I <laughs> yeah. already feel bad about this. I'm not going to fire somebody for you. <laughs> Give me a job title. He's like, yeah, you're host. So, you know, fucking handle that shit. Oh, the yeah. worst. Yeah. Give me a job title. All yeah. right, you're host. Yeah, that makes there Jamie sound like a dick. He's really just such a nice guy that I think he couldn't tell this other nice yeah, guy. We, sure. uh, we kind of don't want you here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the worst. So then did he not come back? Did you tell him that he was done? No, I just played one of my original songs, and the guy started crying and never came back. He was like, Jesus. I... <laughs> the, the real, not a comedy Yeah, song, yeah, yeah, yeah. He stopped on his way out. Yeah, he's like, this is... Talked to one of the waitresses, was like, somebody talk to him. <laughs> I can't come back here yeah. with this shit. Though. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, how long has the show been going on for? Let's see. The first show was like the last week of March, so I don't know. All right, I can do the math. So like six it's, it's months. It's months. Yeah, we're it's getting up good. there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's solid. And it's so fun, guys. So it's on. So it's Chop and Walk. It's on Scottsdale and Shea, the southeast corner. Like a Reconos is in there, and it's next to NYPD Pizza and stuff. Um, it's next to that biker bar. Yeah, I don't know what Starbucks. that's called. I don't know either. Chopper. I went in there recently, Isn't though. It choppers or something? Oh no, that's like a hair salon right across yeah. the street. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, different side. Yeah, where you have Tattoo, to like go upstairs to like get your hair cut. Yeah, I'm like, that's weird. that's a shitty place to have that. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about them. Yeah, yeah. Why are we giving free press to like every other know. bar? And that's true. So haircut <laughs> shop. I don't. Yeah, what, show, what do you call them? I, whatever. The show starts around salons. Salons. <laughs> show starts so, around nine, and for us as comics, we love it. And it doesn't matter who shows up. We have the best time doing that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, just hanging out. And it's, it's cool because it's not at a comedy club, so you don't have that comedy club vibe. But also, as a, somebody that comes in and watches, you also don't have that comedy club vibe where it's like, I have to be 
sitting down and quiet and this and that. Yeah, people just, I mean, it, it'd be great if you didn't sit in the front row and talk like an asshole, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think most of the people that come actually seem to really enjoy it. You know, it's, it's open mic, so sometimes people bomb, whatever. I, if you pay for a ticket, you're going to see somebody bomb from time to time. But, yeah, it's just... I don't know. It's more about just community. It's all good people that show up, and sometimes you get to see somebody just really crush it, which is awesome mm. to be there every week and like see people work on jokes and work on material. It's it's yeah. just really cool. But and yeah, cool and the audience seems to love it. It's a so place it's where we work. We put in our work for bits and jokes that we're trying, and but it's such a laid back feel that you have fun with it. When mm-hmm. one doesn't work, you don't see the like. The yeah, there's no face. panic. Like, there, yeah, that deer in the headlights look does not happen unless it's somebody where it's like their first or second time. And they're gonna get And you that then you see the. Oh, panic. that night! Yes, dude. The night that was like the the fucking greatest, one of the greatest nights was uh, that kid that went for the first time, and he was going really long, and oh. they, waved, they waved it. <laughs> so yeah. at comedy clubs, a lot of times the way they get you off stage is in the back. They wave a phone at you, so that's the light, and you see the light, and then you know you have like thirty seconds or a minute, whatever. It's predetermined. So this kid was going really long. Somebody puts up a phone. And shows I lit light. him. Then I had somebody else lighting yeah. him. Finally, like everybody's <laughs> lighting this kid, <laughs> and out of his mouth he goes, "Oh no, it's cool. Just take a message." Yeah, thought- yeah, because his buddy was lighting him with his own phone, and he's like, "No, it's cool. Just take a message." And, and kept going. Yeah, and I'm just dying <laughs> laughing. Like, yeah, at any other room, Aww. if you did that shit, they would just come kick you off stage. Yeah, you tell you what an asshole bad. you are. And you were not welcome back. But instead, like, we just laughed so hard because oh, it was dude. hilarious. So I mean, that was the best the part of his set. And he didn't know what yeah. he was doing? Yeah. Well, multiple times. He, he told people, like, yeah, I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm doing this right now. Like, <laughs> like 10, 12 yeah. minutes. And he's like, dude, just take a message. But, like, it's yeah. fine. But all the comics <laughs> no, were just asshole. dying. No and finally, we're like, you. it means you have to get off the stage. He and he's like, uh, no, he was no, awful. very first time. Well, because most people, when they do comedy, they're like, oh, I make my friends laugh with stories. So they'll go up there. And tell yeah. stories, and it's like, dude, nobody knows you. Yeah. We don't know the characters involved, and there's way too much exposition. Like, nobody gives a shit about any of this. Could you please... Was he young? I, I would say get to it, but really, you start feeling like, would you please just stop talking? Yeah. <laughs> would you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and actually, we saw... Um, Josh and I talked with this That's one. That's funny. I was last talking night. about being supportive, and then I'm like, "Would you please stop talking?" <laughs> the fuck out of here. But that was hilarious. We were supportive for the first 18 minutes, and then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Josh and I were talking to one comedian who just started three months ago. We won't say his name, um, mm. but he said, uh, "And I'll, we'll bring him on the show." To talk to him about it because he's an interesting guy and he's got different outlooks on things. But one of his things, and he just does the open mics and stuff for right now. He's only been in it for three months. Um, he said, I have a plan. And my plan in comedy is if I don't start getting booked and paid within the first year, then I'm quitting comedy. Because I don't want to waste my time. And yeah. I was like, well, then it looks like you've already <laughs> wasted your time. Yeah. Because Josh and I are looking at him like, are you an idiot? Is he funny? He's all right. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He's got a lot of confidence. So when he goes up there, Obviously. he buys into yeah. like the characters that he does and the bits that he's running. And he's not bad. I mean, he's just new. He's very new. Yeah. So when he says that, Josh, I look at you like, dude, think stop now. Yeah. Because it's not going to happen the first year. I don't give a shit how good you are. Like, it's you're just not yeah. gonna be getting booked for paid gigs right in the first year. No way. Yeah. And he's young, too, so it's like he doesn't have the life experience. To what if he just ends up being one of those people who just gets incredibly lucky because he's just stupid and confident? You'd be so pissed. I wouldn't be pissed. <laughs> no, because I'd, I'd just be, be like... Wrong, yeah, but I wouldn't be yeah. pissed. No, I'd be stoked for him. Yeah. Until he, like, didn't give me free tickets to a show or something. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. Dude, the only reason why you're here right now, the only reason why you're anywhere right now... Because those chopping walks, that's remember that shit. <laughs> yeah, we I'll, pro- I'll be there tonight. Yeah, he said he would. Um, yeah, so no, it was funny. Like shit. the second set he ever did was at Chop and Walk, and I messed his name. Well, I introduced. I don't know. I got drunk that night, <laughs> and I I started introducing one person, but I looked, just glanced at my notebook that had the list of names, and so then. In my mind, it clicked over. I was like, oh, no, it's this person. So I said the name. I said the wrong name. Then I bring him up. And, <laughs> and it's funny because you normally, like, a first or second time comedian isn't going to basically call the host an asshole. Uh-huh. But that's exactly what he did. <laughs> but 
since that was an asshole move, I really just had to be like, yeah, you're you're right, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. He is he's a cool dude. He's a fucking nice guy. Um and I love his ambition. I don't want to shit on him because look, it might happen, but No. Why 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 even entertain the it might happen part? <laughs> That's I got, ridiculous. I got a paid gig after my first time, but then I sucked after and they wouldn't hire me back. <laughs> I don't know. I because I thought it was too easy. Like, with that first time you go up, that's why a lot of comics say, man, the first time I went up, I killed. And then the second time, I didn't. Because you go in so ready, you've gone over this three or five minute set a million times. So you're not going to fuck it well, up. Well, and they pretty much every time it's your first time, they announce that it's your first time. Like, yeah. hey, guys, Everybody's be forgiving. cool to this dude. Yeah. yeah, so people are just, they're super nice. Yeah. I make sure I always say it. One, so that people that don't feel like being charitable, go to the bathroom or go get a beer or something. Yeah. And everybody else is just nice yeah. and supportive. That is why true. be a dick to somebody that that's true. putting themselves out there? But yeah. that's, that's why it's okay to bomb. Because you're doing oh, something great. most people want to try but don't really have the balls to do anyway. Mm-hmm. So even if you bomb, it's like, ah, I, I, tonight I actually did more than most people have done. How often do you, do you get up on stage? Um, I used to get up a lot more. Now it's like maybe once or twice a week. Oh. Yeah, I've that's just not, been, yeah. That's not tons, right? Once or twice? Yeah, a week. No, no that's not a lot not, at all. It's not not doing it. I mean, once you stop doing it for a couple of weeks, you become horseshit again. It's one of those things you got to keep doing. But, it, I mean, at least Josh keeps doing it. Josh, Josh's comedy is cool because it's very um, conversationally done, uh, where it's not super jokey. Like, sometimes I'll set things up myself, and I know I'm hitting a punchline joke end. Mm-hmm. Um, just to get a laugh, but Josh just kind of keeps talking, and it just if it's funny, it's in the it's in the conversation, so and you keep cool. going, and I like that because it's, it's a relaxed feel. You're getting to know that person. What he means is that I don't know how to write a joke, but well, thank you for thank you for phrasing it well, that well, way. Joke book <laughs> gets stolen all the time. That's what I was going to say. Love your jokes. I know about your joke book. Because yeah, getting when I stolen. Saw that's, you oh. go up the first the first time I saw you go up, I was like, oh, that poor guy. His I felt joke so book, bad, I thought, man. Yeah. I was such a <laughs> wait. Was this at stand up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. Like that is the first a time we bad met. Bad night or something. Yeah, no, but that night ended up being awesome because my set actually went over really well. There was gr- there was a girl on a date that I think I could have banged, and that was I, yes, that, she was in the front row. That was a I boost of confidence, yeah. And I had a date after that. Um, oh, but I was super late to it, and so I right. called her to tell her that I was going to be late, and I'm like, oh man, I already. She was the Tinder girl. She was the Tinder girl. Yeah. Very good night. Yeah. Yeah. Who was, who was, and, no, but what's crazy, she was a girl show. that I had a crush on back in like college. She was wow. dating one of my buddy's roommates. Well, so I was super stoked about this. I was like, fuck yeah, Tinder. Anyway. It's for you. She's here. Yeah. Can so. Bring her in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tinder reunion. Yeah, she's just Please giving me my shit every back. Every girl that swiped right for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let me get it up. Let me get it up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, You're like my dog, I'll have to just put yeah. you in the car. No, it was so weird though. So I, I get all excited, and then I tell her, "Hey, I'm running late. I got to do this show at Apollo Apollo's Lounge, which is no longer happening anymore. It's still a happening gay bar, but it's no longer a place to go do stand up. Oh. Gays are a great audience, though. They're they're, they're the way best. cooler. Dude, yeah, they're, they're the they are. They are. They're pretty awesome. So I, she's like, "I'll just meet you where you're going." I'm like. Oh, shit. But but I'm still on a high because I crushed it with no material. So I'm like, uh, yeah, that's fine. But then she beats me there. So she's waiting for me. I didn't really get to prep her on what kind of situation she was walking into. And then there's all these people I need to say hi to. And every every comic that's going up is just destroying it. Like the best sets of their life. And I'm like, I still haven't figured out what I'm going to say. <laughs> so I ended up not going up. I, I, I texted Dave Mendelson, who's mm-hmm. our, our, our mutual, mutual friend. friend. Yep. Um, and I was like, dude, I can't go up. I'm going to look this. like an idiot right now. Yeah. And it actually, it was an awesome date. So I took a girl out for our first date to a gay bar to watch free comedy. <laughs> hey, that's good. Your odds are what, why, do we, why do we break up? I don't get it. Take you know? every girl to a gay bar. That, you have the best odds there. Compete with uh, no one. I've been to one on accident. Really? Yeah. That's a whole nother story. I didn't fuck him. You either. sound so angry. I, didn't uh, I got, well, I got like what? super hit on by, by a guy. Really? That's, yeah. Do you think you're someone's type? No, I was oh, with a girl. he's definitely someone's type. I was with oh, a girl. Oh, dude, you're, you're kind of bearish. Stop, dude. I was no, much thinner back then. I was much uh, thinner. 
Uh, like this is a new look for me. Yeah, I was it's a strong thinner. look though. Back then. I don't like it at all. Winter's coming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I have a um, not so much anymore, I guess. But I had a um, a habit where I put my belt buckle, make sure it's over the button on my jeans, like the whatever. Okay. And so I do it a lot. And oh. I was walking with the girl and in the gay bar Flashing it. club, yeah. and she stopped walking. Think it was funny. And I fixed my belt and turned around. So my hand's just kind of like right on my dick. And there's a guy standing right in front of me. And he That's thinks not I'm the way to right walk around in any bar, though. That's what's great. Yeah, you're right. Just <laughs> <laughs> but I've never been hit on a regular yeah. bar. Like in that. a straight bar, it just makes uh, chicks leave me alone. But at a gay bar, it's all like, you know, yeah, he liked they're the about dude. it. Put I his bet. hand on my body. It was like, ooh, hey. Yeah, ran <laughs> he, it down my chest and my stomach. Like, Get the fuck off of me. I'm not homophobic, but I, I'm not gay. So I don't, and I don't like being touched like, by straight people touching. or yeah. gay people. Yeah, the the only time that it's annoying is when there it's it's a gay person that truly believes that every man is gay. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> you uh, know? That's how I feel about stoners. They feel like everybody smokes weed. They're just like, oh, they did that. That guy must be high. It's like, no, that guy just is an idiot. I don't yeah. Know. I feel they're the like, same no, way about No, no, he's look at him, man. <laughs> he's he's all confused, and you're like, yeah, because he's trying to do his son's math homework, and he's retarded. <laughs> yes, he's just high. No, but look, now he's like, uh, he's all, he looks hungry and shit. It's lunchtime. You're like, what do you so mean? That's yeah. how I feel about stoners. Yeah. I had a gay friend who I don't really talk to anymore, just for no reason. We just don't talk anymore. But when we did, uh, one day I was like, dude, am I gay? Because like you can tell if somebody's gay. And I, I didn't think I was. It was just like I wanted to be sure. Yeah, and you found like, out hey, the man. penises taste awful. <laughs> I just kept it. not liking it. Yeah. Like, Dude, am I gay? And he goes, no. And I go, all right, why? Like, how do you know? And he goes, because you're not. And I was like, that's all I needed to know, bro. Thank you. Now I can continue to get rejected by women. I never have a future <laughs> <laughs> in gay. So you're um, doing it right. I, I honestly would love to be gay. Like, I... I just think it'd be great. Yeah, dude. Greg yeah. Geraldo had a great thing. They have so much shit. more fun, it seems like. Like I'm yeah, I know that like middle school and high school would have been Must horrible be for me. But dude, I would own it. Not anymore, I think high Gay school dudes is very love good me. Friendly. Now it's a thing. Now, now it's, it's like, like you're the cool club yeah. wearing the good gay yeah, shoes and everything else. It's completely changed. fine they have. now. Yeah. But we knew when we were kids. I mean, there was a couple kids we went to elementary yeah. school with. That yeah, were like, that kid's gay. gay. Yeah, before you even knew what gay was, you're yeah. like, that's, well, I don't know what all this entails, but, yeah. I mean, he does I weird know, shit, yeah. I bet, <laughs> in the future. I know you don't like women, and I know you run and throw like one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's not what yeah. we are, so we're going to fuck with you yeah. for a while. We're gonna <laughs> what is with that voice? <laughs> I do that bit. What a queer I do, I do, accent. I do that bit about the voice. My ignorant friend. Why do they talk like that? I don't know. You take a dick in the ass and see if your voice doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We got we to gotta wrap this up. We got to get going. Oh, well, uh, oh shoot. Yeah, we got, we got a show to host. I know. Uh, Nance, ask him the last question. We always have one last question. Um, so ask away. And okay. then uh, that's it, guys. We'll see you next week. All right, Josh, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? I would probably go back to acting. <laughs> Good answer. All right, man, yeah. To, I love that question because every single person we've ever had on the show's answer is completely different. Like, yeah. I mean, so acting is so the passion. What a, all right, so if you couldn't fail, you go into acting and then does it just build to like you're this huge... Like, I don't think I'd want to be like a huge star. I just want to be like a respected character actor. I mean, you where you're always working, it. you're so always traveling. Are you, you winning know? awards? Well, yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. everybody wants a public hand job. Are every you now against and then. the porn industry? Have you uh, ever like, like about of it? legal age, like legal age <laughs> porn. No, that's that's all right. I mean, you could try your hand in the porn you No, know, people have told me to do porn. I don't think that's a good idea. No? No. That would be like... That's AIDS backwards. does happen in yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so probably no to the porn. I don't know, just acting is kind of a dumb profession if you don't live in California. Because it all depends on a lot of things that might not even make sense or are completely out of your control. It's yeah. not like, hey, I'm, I'm the best at this job right here. Is They're like, yeah, know? well, anybody can do this in this room, and I, I'm friends with this Is dude. that a lot of who you know? Yeah. That's unfortunate. Dude, what's true. your acceptance speech if you win an award? 
I would probably apologize to everybody that, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. It would be like, I'm only here because of a lot of patient people. Patient people. I would yeah. like to thank all the patient people. Yeah. I, love, I love that instead of thanking people. Yeah, I'm apologize. serious. <laughs> like, like, like we, we were talking about elementary school. One of the ladies at the front office would call my house to wake me up. Cause, and, yeah. Where are you? A, a lot, the best looking well, little kid well, in the my, world my, or something? My, I was adorable. But, <laughs> no, my mom was a school psychologist, so she had all these important meetings oh, before. You yeah, so she didn't work at that school, otherwise it would have been in deep shit. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was pretty embarrassed when she found out, out that Miss Beach you. had been calling me for like two years. That's yeah. incredible. That's awesome. Oh, shit. When yeah. Kevin and I started doing the show um, a little over a year ago, we, I just heard about vines. Remember the Vine videos? Yeah. And he, Kevin told the funniest joke. He said um, he'd make a Vine video, of, like a sex tape or something, but he'd spend the, for the last three minutes apologizing. <laughs> no, 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 seconds. not right at all. He said something, he'd spend the first... Say yeah. it. Well, Nobody it can so ever funny. say he said the funniest joke and go on to tell the joke and <laughs> have it be any good. That's I not how... I everything, but he... <laughs> no, I get it, it and that's brilliant. Yeah, videos. yeah. 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 I said my sex tape would be on Vine and yeah. it would be five <laughs> extra seconds of me apologizing. <laughs> Get that one good no. second yeah. there. Or actually lying. It would be five seconds of you lying. Say, I don't understand. This never happens. <laughs> and it just ends. Oh, yeah. Yours would be like, I thought she was 18. <laughs> oh, that was Jesus. it. That's it. All right. We're out of here. <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Thank you, guys.